Hey guys, welcome to The Strong Young Man. Today I'm going to go through intermittent fasting, which you can use as a tool to achieve many things, including improved health, fat loss, cure disease, increased cognitive function, and resetting and detoxing the body. Fasting in combination with a ketogenic diet is also the fastest way to cure diabetes, a concept I went over in episode 10. Firstly, I need to make the distinction between intermittent fasting and starvation. Starvation is limiting calories to put the body in a nutritionally deficient state. Fasting is having a sufficient amount of calories, say 2,000 to 2,500, but in a short window of time. The total calories consumed will vary depending upon your needs and goals. You fast for something like 16 hours and feed for 8 hours. The feeding should include a vast array of nutritious food and is not an excuse to binge on sugar and other processed foods. Everyone fasts to an extent throughout the day. When you regularly eat dinner at 8pm and don't eat breakfast until 8am the next morning, you are doing a 12-hour fast with a 12-hour feeding window. Increasing the time spent in a fasted state will increase the benefits that fasting brings. Here is what happens as you fast. Stage 1. Fed state. 0-8 to eight hours after last meal. Glucose is converted to glycogen and stored in the liver and muscles to be used as energy. Excess glucose is converted to triglycerides and stored as fat. Stage 2. Intermittent fast. 8 to 24 hours after last meal. The body is utilizing the stored glycogen in the liver and muscles as energy. Stage 3. Short-term fast. 24 to 48 hours. The liver will synthesize glucose from damaged cells in the hair, skin, nails, intestinal lining, and lean tissue through a process called autophagy. This does not mean muscle breakdown is occurring. The body is recycling damaged proteins into new, stronger proteins, which rejuvenates the body. The body will also break down triglycerides into glycerol and then glucose and fatty acids. The brain will run off ketones, which it will make from the fatty acids. When the brain runs on ketones, it operates at an efficiency that most people never experience because they don't fast. Stage 4. Long-term fast. Longer than 5 days. Growth hormone and adrenaline are secreted in abundance in order to preserve muscle mass, increase bone density, and increase the metabolism. Yes, that's increase the metabolism. The body does this as a survival mechanism to ensure that humans have enough energy and strength to find their next meal. Without this hormonal response, humans in the Paleolithic era would have died during short periods of famine. When completely fasting, the body is less inclined to break down muscle tissue until all of its fat reserves are depleted. This is in contrast to the muscle loss which occurs during prolonged caloric restriction. These beneficial adaptive changes do not occur during the caloric reduction dieting strategy. One such study verifies this. The link is in the description. It compared 8 and 32 weeks of alternate day fasting versus calorie restricted eating. After 32 weeks, both subjects lost similar total weight. Calorie restricted eaters lost 5 kilos and alternate day fasters lost 5.7 kilos. Calorie restricted eaters lost 1.6 kilos of lean mass and alternate day fasters lost only 1.2 kilograms of lean mass. As a result, the calorie restricted eaters lost 0.7% body fat and alternate day fasters lost 2.4% body fat. The resting metabolic rate also decreased less in the alternate day fasting group with the calorie restricted eaters losing 76.1 calories per day and alternate day fasters losing 29.2 calories per day. This includes adjusting the basal metabolic rate to account for the reduction due to muscle loss. To get the benefits of fasting, you need to avoid the following. Food, anything with calories, bone broth, branched chain amino acids, chewing gum, cayenne peppers, apple cider vinegar, smoking, CBD oil, insulin injections, alcohol, toothpaste, and sugar-free drinks. Note that all sweeteners trigger cephalic phase insulin response, which means that they break a fast. Severe stress can also break your fasted state. During fasting, there are some things that you can consume that will not break your fast. These include water, black coffee, black tea, green tea, red tea, herbal teas without fruit, creatine without artificial sweeteners, cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, curcumin, carbonated water, beta alanine, magnesium, vitamin D3, zinc, potassium, salt, ashwagandha, and nitric oxide. Fasting may be a scary concept to people who have never attempted it, but it becomes much easier the more you do it. Please don't be put off by it. It really is an amazing practice. There are different lengths of fasts, so I'll go through all the fasts that I regularly do in a calendar year. Intermittent fasting. 18-hour fast, 6-hour feeding window, utilized 5 to 6 times per week on days where I exercise. Short-term fasting. 48 hours, utilized 1 to 2 times per month on rest days. 
Prolong fasting, three to six days, utilized one to two times per year when I have a rest week from the gym. I'm gonna show you how to implement fasting in a slow and controlled way so that it causes minimal problems with regards to adherence. Here's how to fast. Start small. Start by pushing your breakfast back as far as you can. The next step is to skip your breakfast in favor of an early lunch. Finally, you can push back your lunch until you hit the start of your target feeding window. This can be done over a period of several weeks to ensure that you are slowly adapting to the change in lifestyle. My eating window is from 2.30 to 8.30 p.m. I have lunch at 2.30. I work out from 6 to 7.30. I have a post-workout shake at 7.30 and I eat dinner at 8.30. Three meals per day, no snacking. Fasting is easiest if you consistently fast at the same time of day, as appetite is closely linked with circadian rhythm. Try to master intermittent fasting for 12 months before you attempt any fast longer than 24 hours. If you aren't a competitive athlete, but still believe that you need carbohydrates to function, then I am asking you to reconsider. Every single one of my personal record-breaking lifts in the gym has been set when I'm deep in ketosis, i.e. no carbohydrates for four to five days, or completely fasted. Once you get used to this performance and you find the right balance, you will wonder why you didn't do this sooner. Note that ketogenic diets are not as effective for performing well during long periods of endurance exercise, but are great for high intensity exercise. If you are feeling weak or tired during fasting, then it is likely that you are deficient in electrolytes, most specifically sodium. Fasting expels water and other minerals from the body as the stored glycogen is burned for fuel. You need to consume salt to replenish what you lose. I've dedicated episode 15 entirely to salt consumption. Sufficient salt is essential for optimum performance. Being deficient in salt will completely ruin fasting for you. I need to emphasize its importance, especially for fasts longer than 24 hours. I've had to end fasts abruptly because I was deficient in sodium. As a result, I had a headache. I felt dizzy, weak, and tired. It's a horrible feeling. Start with 10 grams of salt per day, mixed into your water. Increase your salt consumption to 15 grams of salt per day on days where you exercise or consume a lot of water. Increase your salt even further if you feel weak. Make sure you are taking a mineral-rich salt such as Himalayan pink salt during every fasting period. This will prevent deficiencies in sodium, chloride, magnesium, potassium, iodine, calcium, iron, phosphorus, boron, bromine, and copper from developing. General rules. Number one, if you aren't hungry, don't eat. Number two, don't snack. Number three, take a multivitamin for fasts longer than 48 hours. Number four, if you feel hungry during your fast and are thinking of breaking it early, distract yourself with a 30-minute task and then reassess your hunger. Most of the time, I'm not hungry after a 30-minute distraction. Number five, are you hungry or just bored? Number six, drink at least three liters of water with 10 grams of salt per day. Add one liter of water plus three grams of salt for every hour of exercise. Consume additional water and salt to replace what you lose due to sweating. How to break a fast. You should break your fast gently, consuming a very small meal, relatively high in fat, moderate in protein, and very low in carbohydrates. You're extremely insulin sensitive after a fast. Anything too large or too high in carbohydrates will overload your system. Eat real food, made from the healthiest versions of that food. Eat organic wherever possible. Some foods such as red meat are not suitable for breaking a fast. I have found that the best meals to break a fast are meals consisting of fish or chicken and uncooked vegetables such as kale, coleslaw, or other salad. If you do decide to break your fast with a big meal, have something small 30 minutes prior to prepare your stomach for digestion. Drink a bottle of water with your break fast meal to restore hydration. In the period following your fast, don't overeat to compensate. Eat until you are full and no more. High fat, low carb foods that are suitable for breaking a fast. Wild caught fish, free range fowl, avocados, olives, butter, ghee, coconut oil, olive oil, dark chocolate, 99%, and nuts and nut butters. The benefits of fasting are huge and are well worth trying. Fasting increases cognitive function. When you eat a big meal, blood is shunted to the digestive system to cope with the influx of food, leaving less blood for brain function. As a result, after a big meal, you often feel tired, sluggish, and require a nap. Fasting does the opposite. You get an increase in cognitive function and alertness once the stomach has digested the last of your food. If you need extra brain power to complete a complex task, fasting can be a tool used to accomplish this. Other benefits of fasting include better skin with no acne, high levels of growth hormone, more energy, boosted immunity, autophagy, fat loss, softer hair, better oral health, better gut health, improved lipid panel, 
extends life, and reverses aging. When combining fasting with caloric restriction, it increases brain-derived neurotropic factor. BDNF plays a key role in creating neurons and protecting existing neurons, also helping you live longer. Final disclaimer, fasting is not suitable for anyone in a growing phase of their life, including all children, adults that are still growing, or bodybuilders trying to grow muscle. This also includes pregnant women and breastfeeding women. If you have type 2 diabetes, this protocol must be followed under your doctor's supervision. Your doctor will need to monitor the status of your diabetes to ensure that your treatment adapts to suit your improved health. Thanks for watching today's episode. In episode 33, I'll talk about why women cannot understand your masculine problems. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when it drops. Catch you then.